go. So, now that you can see me recording on this decent quality webcam, well it's not great quality but compared to the stuff I usually use, you know, um, I've now got to set up the sound <coughs> to make the sound better on this video. So while I do that, I'm also going to be using the microphone to hopefully do some recording if I've still got time because I've just spent like an hour uh, trying to set up a camera with the uh, my phone basically. He's uh, recording with my phone but the microphone doesn't seem to be working on it and then figure that out after spending ages trying to get the perfect position and try and uh, create a proper stand for it. So I'm going to show you how I set up my microphone to be much better than it is now that you can hear now. Um, it's going to turn the camera off on the actual phone so that doesn't run out of battery. Ah, cheap shit man. So, start off some basic stuff. Where is it? There it is. And by basic stuff, I mean cup of tea. Dynamic microphone. This is the most common typical microphone that you will see. Uh, used in like karaoke, used in pretty much all venues, uh, there's an audience. And this one is a condenser microphone. Now, the difference between the two, um, now you'll get them at different prices, so different quality and everything, but overall the main difference you need to know is this is for live venues where there will be background noise because it's designed so that it picks up on sound waves that are closer to the actual microphone head mesh, whatever you want to call it, um, and will filter out more of the background noise, not completely obviously, but uh, that's why they're used in live venues. Um, whereas this one um, captures the whole room, but the reason you would go for this one, and like why wouldn't you just go for this one? Well, this is much higher quality um, because it doesn't have to negotiate, if you like, with engineering to try and filter out certain sound waves. This just picks up on. Um, a whole different range of sound waves and still you need to get a certain distance from the mic to get the best sound but it will pick up on a lot more background noise which is why you tend to use uh, sound pads um, uh, did a little, I've forgotten what it's called soundproofing uh, in recording studios in Need Quiet where you record it in a recording studio but it is worth the quality um, now these in case you want to set one of these up, because these are typically cheaper by the way, so it makes sense to go for one of these if you're doing like some basic recording stuff, uh, if you want a basic quality, nothing too special or amazing, but better than cheap sort of standard laptop microphone recording. Uh, excuse me, um, I used to actually buy them from the pound shop uh, when I had band practice like years ago, so when we were like teenagers. And like every like probably like two weeks, it, it, and the microphone would just go to like stop working and just get another one, and I <laughs> have like three or four with me and that is ridiculous. Um, this one I think was probably like I think this one was actually bargaining it was like thirty pounds, decent. Again, not radio friendly quality or anything like that. It's decent enough, and I bought three of them, a pack of three, for thirty pound, and I got a nice little case with it. Um, I want two of a little bob, uh, bobs and bits. Uh, but, and sometimes there are XLR, I mean the three pins, uh, that's where the XLR cable goes into. Same with this one, that's pretty much always for these. Um, and sometimes you can get ones where it's automatically got the lead sort of built into it, so it just goes straight into a jack obviously different jack sizes I think it's uh, what is it 1.5 and 3 millimeters uh, small and big jack basically so I'm gonna put that aside for a moment and so yeah uh, usually you can just plug the jack headphone jack 1.5 the small jack into your laptop you might have to go into settings to set it up but yeah it's pretty straightforward using that condenser microphones on the other hand 
I don't know if there's exceptions to this, but as far as I know, all condenser microphones turn out to be a bit more of a pain in the ass setting up. Um, I mean, it was a pain for me because I didn't know much about it and I expected it to be the same as the dynamic microphones that I've shown you. Turns out these will typically need phantom power. What that means is it needs a fucking strong battery, so usually it uses the mains. But rather than plug it straight into the mains, you plug it into some kind of device that is plugged into the mains. <laughs> Meaning, uh, usually a mixing desk would be the most typical thing. You can get some now where, again, you get uh, you can get a cable already built in that goes straight into a USB at the end of it. So you just plug it straight into your laptop. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, I'm guessing just use a headphone jack for your headphones or something from your laptop. But anyway, uh, it took me ages to go uh, about figuring out how the hell to use this and set it up. Very frustrating, but now that I know, I can give you a little insight on what the hell it's all about. So, uh, do -do 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 -do, let me put this on a stand first. So, this one's pretty handy. You have a cool little radio show type thing. Came with the uh, pack. I got a Noma, I think they're called. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know much about condenser microphone brands. I uh, don't know much about dynamic microphone brands, to be honest. Uh, but it's, you know, half decent quality. Nothing too amazing, nothing too shit, you know. It's alright. Um, for cheap, it's pretty damn efficient and effective. Does the job for me. Um, now, if you know a bit or two about getting the best quality sound out of a cheap mic recording, then it's going to be more beneficial than having zero knowledge on sound engineering and buying a thousand pound microphone. So, know what you're doing. Uh, it's easier said than done because there's a lot to learn, you know. But I'm just going to pop that there in this case. Actually, the laptop's going to be over there, so I'm put it over here. It's pretty cool. It's a little additional thing. It's just a little clamp, basically. So you can clamp it to things, and then it's got that. Um, sorry, that to put the actual stand into. So you don't have to add it off the floor. Although I could easily. In fact, I'm just going to do that. It's probably quicker and easier once sec. Da da, a normal microphone stand. I don't know about the different names, just mic stand. That's, that's all I know. Uh, so, oh, tightened them a bit, didn't I? Right. So now the cool thing is. Oh, by the way, <coughs> dynamic mics will have that kind of holder, I suppose. Whereas the condenser microphones, uh, will have something more. That's never going to work. Um, something more like this. You can see that well. Um, you've probably seen them in recording studios and that. Oops, I've undone the wrong bit. Anyway, the cool thing about this isn't just that it looks like a cool holder, it's these little, you can see that very well, these little wires, these little ding ding dings, these little things here, these strings, um, they hold all the vibrations so you don't hear footsteps and you know, bass from the walls and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, if you accidentally hit the mic stand or anything like that, it's very good for keeping it very quiet because all the vibrations will be absorbed by these strings. Sweet. Maybe. Yeah. Now, this also came with a mic pop filter uh, or a mesh filter, you know, around mesh ones, but I don't know where that's gone. So all I've got is this, which I think I can't remember which one's which. I think one's for more 
from the pop filters for obviously popping the p, p sound and I think this one is more for T's and S's like t and s um, I think the pop filters for other things like I don't know certain letters make a bit sort of yeah come through a bit more profound exaggerated on the, the microphone without the filters so I've heard debates between which one you should choose I've always just used two let's hope for one last in which case I'm just using this one well, yeah. alternatively if you if you really that broke I used to just use a, a bandana and wrap that around it similar sort of thing really well, you know you could probably use like a sock or something yeah. I'd advise a clean one you know yeah. this is a very cheap basic mixing desk of a trustable brand these guys this sort of thing you'll see these are usually the most common kind of mixing desk you would get uh, I've seen one or two cheaper I happen to go with this one um, so yeah phantom power deal probably mention on there somewhere, I mention on the box if anything. Uh, preamp, no. It's... Doesn't mention that it's phantom powered specifically, but you know, it, it plugs in by the mains. So you can guess, and it's got the XLR uh, in, what do you call it, line in, uh, and then the jack one. If you get a jack cable that goes into this microphone, it will not work. I spent ages trying different things, it doesn't work. You have to use XLR to XLR. That's another little catch that you need to know about. So, so I'm about to plug in the mixing desk, and also I need to plug in the laptop. So that doesn't run out of battery. And we have power. So now it's nothing. Uh, music teacher would not be happy with how long I've left this, but you want to make sure. In fact, I'm going to unplug this completely. Wrap this around the microphone stand because it's one thing to have an accident to yourself, but something that affects your equipment is just never good and it will all end up in tears. So, be sure to. Ta-da, tidy up your cables, get your shit together. Right, now then, you have power. So all we need to do now is plug it in via the USB. <laughs> is what I first thought when I used to have this thing. Um, turns out, <clears throat> you need one of these bad boys. Now if you're wondering what this is called, so am I, I can't remember, but it, is something that sends something it sends the mixing desk to the laptop or laptop to the mixing desk um, so the mixing desk is halfway point and this is an extra stage in it sometimes you'll have uh, a mixing desk that will be able to be plugged straight into the laptop I don't think many do the USB goes into the laptop nice and easy it's uh, knowing what you got to get and then actually getting it that's a pain in the ass. So that's all set up. You could hear the little ding on the laptop then as well. Oh, that's gone cold. Right. Last but not least. Oh, I forgot the name of these bloody things as well. These things, the little things you get like on the back of the old big ass box tellers that used to blow up after like 20 years um I can't remember called I'm sure you've seen them the little aerial type looking things you don't want the yellow ones you just want red and, uh, red and white to red and white and you want two of them so red and white to red and white this will be going from the input on the mixing desk 
I'm just putting the wrong way around. So input from the mixing desk to the output on the sound carrying from mixing desk to laptop box thing, MIDI, what's it? Um, you might be able to, anyone that's used Pro Tools or anything like that, you might be able to use them. What is it, MIDI boxes, MIDI audio box or whatever it is. Anyway, and then of course some output on the mixing desk. So input on the MIDI audio box, we're gonna call it now. And that's probably not the right term. And then again, simply tidy up your wires. I've left the cable ties and stuff upstairs, but yeah. So this will have to do. Um, <clears throat> now, make sure your sound controls are either low or centered. The equalizing stuff should all be centered, unless you've preset it, obviously. Um, but you know, you don't want everything to be like up and then plug everything in and then you get screech and then your microphone's fucked or anything like that. So, uh, is it two? Two track to mix, I think, was the right one. I think this has been messed with. Um, enough experiment. I think that's the right one. Uh, keep your main, your mix low as well. You'll have a mix button. Yeah, I'll show you it. So it's got. Let me go a look. You got. Main mix is here. Earphones, keep them low to start with as well. Keep the mix low. So what you want, um, ideally. When you talk into the microphone, you can try clicking your fingers right next to it as well, like an inch away. You want it to, uh, having a volume to light up um, on the lowest bar. So in this case, we've got the green bars, green, green, yellow, red. So the first green bar, if that lights up, that means you've got enough sound, um, and it's picking up on sound everything's working and then if it hits red then it's too loud you know what I mean it's peaking and you're not going to get the right sound quality it's going to be very distorted like a high gain like an overriding gain so you ideally want it to just be touching the yellow I find though I keep it very low as long as it's picking up on the first bar then that's enough for me um, and yeah, it's a good way to start out anyway. Uh, Make sure your monitor, if you like, your MIDI audio monitor is switched on. There's no point showing you the on button, you, you can figure that out. Turn it up a little bit if there's a volume uh, switch or whatever. Scroller. And then, yeah, I'm ready to go. All I've got to do now is set the camera up so that this microphone will be going through. And that will happen now. And boom, it's working, hopefully. If all goes well and correctly, this should be picking up pretty nicely. Uh, if you're going to go really quiet, you can get quite close to the microphone. But roughly, you want... Well, depends on your voice. I think, uh, was it higher pitched voices be a little further back and lower? I've heard. I don't, I'm not convinced by that. But if you've got a particularly deep voice, apparently you're supposed to go a little above the microphone. Although I don't, that might, I might have got that wrong. That might be to get a deeper voice, pick up on more bass. I don't know. Anyway, experiment with being above to experiment the bass and then. I find the best sound for me personally to be about a foot away from this. So to you, I'm looking at like this. So I could fit like two hands like that. And I'm and then nearly, yeah, about two hands. I've got a little hand, but you know, I think it's probably just over a foot actually. It's probably about a foot. Um, it's like over a foot and then about an inch or two above the microphone. Seems work for the best sound overall for me. Uh, experiment, see what works for you. I'm gonna have to do this with a 
camera now. Um, I'll set this up. Set this back a little bit. No, this this is all set up. It's been a bit scruffy and. No. I can go on to the music software and start recording. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video because this one has taken way longer than it should have needed to. Um, no doubt my daughters are going to wake up any second now. So I think I'm going to take a little two minute break to myself and uh, crack on with the day from there, I think. All right. So, um, any questions you can ask, of course. I uh, don't know if I'll be able to answer them all, but you know, if I have to know the right bike to go to, because I've seen quite a few videos and playlists and stuff like that, I can hopefully send you in the right direction. So I'll see if I can find the right video for condenser microphones and basically the equipment you'll need to set one up, rather than just go with the equipment that I've used. You might look at alternative options or at least have a uh, know the names of things so you can actually look for them on like eBay, Amazon, whatever. So, oh, one last thing. You can plug your earphones. I wouldn't recommend using earphones actually. I'll talk about this in a second. You can plug them either into the audio box, which is what I tend to do. Um, I've never tried plugging them into the mixing desk, mainly because you need like a bigger jack, which I've got. So, yeah. um, or sometimes you can plug them straight into the laptop, but I typically do it in the mixing desk. Uh, the, sorry, the audio MIDI box um, monitor thing. Do -do 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 -do. Other than that, I was going to talk about some one of the earphones. Yeah, so you, I've been using these Fancy earphones, these JVC Marshmallows. They're not too bad for making a basic rough home recording, but they're not very efficient. Most of earphones are really bad these are not too bad for it to the best of the ones i've found anyway because of the base for carrying the equalizer that you have built in um the reason you shouldn't be using earphones in general is because it might sound good through the earphones and on the computer uh, and maybe on a little basic speaker that has a bit of bass to it <coughs> but when you play it back through say like a car stereo you're going to get a lot more bass than expected typically like the sound levels aren't going to be the same um, because you're putting it through a different equaliser and you'll get that wishy-washy uh, or, or tinny sort of sound you know like it's underwater um, <coughs> so you're supposed to be using studio monitors I don't really have any I'm going to soon send my mate give me my old PA speakers so that I don't think anyone's used and they've just been sort of lying around somewhere for quite a long time <coughs> in his office. I'll be able to set up PA speakers, hopefully use them as monitors and see if it's quite the same thing or not. Because uh, I think they basically are monitors, they just typically use the bifocus, but they have a slightly different equalizer built in. Anyway, um, other than that, sometimes you can use headphones. Some headphones are a little bit better, but it's the same kind of thing with the earphones really. But if you are that broke that you can't afford monitors right now or any time in the next two three months then go with JVC marshmallows you can still get them for like a tenner and they have all around brilliant sound for anything let's do with these if they they are the equivalent of the old school uh, it's hard to find them now because you get all sorts of headphones like even with uh, school candies and great beats headphones I've tried they're nowhere near as good as these, I don't think, because they carry that old school stereo bass into them and they just balance out different styles of equaliser really well. Anyway, JVC marshmallows, they're the ones I'll go for. Although there's some new marshmallow JVC ones and they're not quite as good. Go for the old ones, the ones with the big fat thing on it. I'll show you the shape of it as well so you know which ones to get. They're pretty flat and it's the same shape. Some of them green and curved and stuff and you don't want that. Um, some of them have the same sound, some of them don't, so it's a bit weird. I think there's some like knockoff makes, so, you know, we have the made in China and then they put a little JVC sticker on it and then sell them off as if it's JVC and stuff like that. But anyway, <coughs> that's about all I got for this one, so I'm going to do some little recording. I'll probably do that another day when I've got time for it. Again, juggling projects, so.
That's that.